Here at the Rainbow Tavern, we usually settle discrepancies in one of two ways. One being, of course, to drink ale, and the other way to be a battle to the death royale. In this case, though, Yellow put drinks on my bar tab, and thusly, he must now pay with his life. Fortunately, here we have seven other wizards who like to get into battles, and so what happens, generally speaking, is we attempt to battle one another with our magical spells and abilities. Now, of course, once one wizard has been defeated, and, and uh, they have been eliminated from the tavern, that will end the feud, and things generally go back to normal. Here, with the wizards of Roy G. Biv, all the colors of the rainbow, as we attempt to defeat one of the other wizards in hand-to-hand -hand and or magical combat. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Wizards of Roy G. Biv. In the game Wizards of Roy G. Biv, you play as two to six players, about 45 minutes or so to play, and for ages 12 and up. And you're going to be playing as a wizard. Wizard in a magical tavern brawl where you're going to be having a battle royale to the death. Once one player has been eliminated, the game is over. You'll be utilizing mana and health to cast spells, buy spells from a market of different colors, you can utilize your own spells, which will be cheaper and more efficient, or you can dip into other players' spell libraries to utilize their spells. On your turn, you'll be drawing cards and playing cards and buying cards, as well as gaining things like shields and power. But the main goal, of course, is to simply remove all the health of another wizard from their board or fully corrupt them with corruption cubes. There's a unique little corruption tracker where you'll be moving along health and corruption mana on that board there, trying to manipulate it as best as you possibly can while your opponents are trying to dwindle you down. If you can survive the battle royale and be the one wizard to eliminate the first wizard in the game, you'll win the game Wizards of Roy G. Biv. Let's go ahead and take you uh, out and we'll show you all the components in the game as well as uh, what is the basic idea. We'll go down, I'll show you how to play the game, and then we'll have our review. So here we have everything included with the Wizards of Roy G. Biv, which Roy G. Biv is actually red, yellow, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, which is all the colors of the rainbow, basically. And so there are all the colors of the rainbow presented in this game, and all the wizards do different things. You're also going to get a deck for each of the wizards based on their color, as well as some white cards. And these white cards are all, of this, all the same in each stack, but there is a total of seven different types. And uh, you're going to get your player board, which is your wizard which to choose to start with. You're going to get a certain amount of power and mana based on your starting positions in the game. You're going to get two power, except for this red guy, he gets an additional one. And then because he's starting first, he'll get no shields. But this player is going second, so he'll get one. This player is going third, so he gets two. Three, four, five, you, you get the idea, all right? But everybody's get the, gets, gonna get these two powers here. Unless, of course, their player board says something different. Everybody has their own unique powers. These are your health, which are gonna be calculated here, along with five mana, and there's a specific amount you're gonna need to start with, but it's pretty easy to set it up because you can just simply put five of your mana here and then fill the rest up with white, and that will fill up your board to start the game off. Every wizard will do that as well. These are corruption, and as they get placed on your board, they will remove certain uh, abilities from you, the ability to gain more mana or to gain more health and these are hard to get rid of and if you have a full corruption on your board here you, you lose the game as well it's another way to take damage basically these are shields which prevent you from taking damage but not your pets and those over there are power and power is basically utilized on certain cards for certain wizards in certain decks you're also going to get three cards of your choice from your deck to start off with the quick setup there are multiple different ways to set the game up but for the basic purposes of this explanation you will basically look at your deck of cards choose any of the specific cards that have a little like yin yang symbol on them and don't choose the uh, instant spells or the creature spells after you've got three of those you're gonna get one counter spell of the white cards and choose any other one you want except for maybe tiny demons which is more of a complicated more complicated gameplay however there are certain ways where you can just kind of select whatever you would like these are the mana for each of the different wizards there and you're gonna be gaining certain mana around every turn everybody's going to also get the rules for the game a quick start guide and of course the box in order 
to play the game, and that's pretty much what is included in this game, as you can see. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you basically two wizards going back and forth on their turns so you get an idea of how the game is played, and then let's talk about the game and what I think about it. So here we have a two-player setup for Wizards of Roy G. Biv. We're going to be playing as Ragnar, that really cool little snail dude, and we'll be playing as Orkia, or Orc... Ocaria. <laughs> this player here can have five cards at the start of his turn as opposed to having to check to make sure he has three spells. And this player here starts off with an additional ray or power, I should say, because he's so full of rage. Normally players will start with two. So in this case, he gets no shield because he's starting the game, but he gets one shield because he will be going second. And it's pretty simple. He's, everybody has their starting hand. They're going to take that and that's going to form their deck. They're going to shuffle the cards in their hand and or in their deck, I suppose, and then place it down right here next to the player board and then after that every single player is going to draw three cards now of course there's only so many cards in your deck to start the game off but as you continue playing your deck will get larger and larger so this player will draw his three cards and this player is going to draw his three cards now Ragnar will begin his turn and he'll check down this turn reference track here so first of all does he have three cards in hand and he does if he had more than three cards he'd suffer some kind of penalty uh, then he's going to be uh, checking any of his creature spells in front here in which case they're going to do some kind of uh, passive ability at the beginning of his turn. Then he's going to gain five mana. He's got that already to start the game with. And now he can cast spells. Spells have a cost in the top right-hand corner, and then they have a type symbol on the top left-hand corner. In this case is a magical spell. There are also instantaneous effects, and then there's going to be these creature spells here, which are located at the top left. Uh, this one here says that a wizard buries and gains a new spell. They pay and uh, the cost and take it in their hand. And then you draw a spell from your draw pile. And if you play the overload effect, which is removing this, then you know, the, that wizard buries and gains one additional new spell. So it actually kind of helps people, but it also helps yourself, I suppose. And that's going to cost three to play. Magic Missiles is a useful one for Ragnar, which I think he'll go ahead and start by playing. He'll go ahead and play this card. That'll cost him two mana, so we'll remove two from his track here. And then it says you shoot a number of magic missiles equal to your power, and he has three, so he can do three damage. Each missile may affect, uh, may target an, any wizard multiple times, damaging them for one health. And then if he overloads, he gets an additional missile. He's going to keep this, though. He doesn't want to lose it, so it's going to be three damage, and it'll go ping, ping, ping. This player here is going to take that damage unless he happened to have a counter spell, which he doesn't, or something to counter that card. So he'll lose three health. It'll get removed from that track there. You can gain health, but it's a little harder, as well as you can gain corruption, which you don't want. Magic Missiles will go into his discard pile, but we'll go ahead and put it over here right now. And then he can play any other cards he wants. Remember, he only has three mana. Now, when you're playing cards, it'll cost you mana. However, you can also pay health to do the same thing. It's basically health is considered mana, uh, and so you can go ahead and use health to buy cards and whatnot, but it's at a higher cost because it's, of course, health. Uh, this one over here is called a Wizard Gains a Power, and it can overload to also draw a spell. He'll just go ahead and play this card for two, and then he's going to gain a power, making him go up to four power. After he's done playing his spells, he's going to keep this card. He can choose to bury a spell on these stacks here by simply taking it and putting it underneath the stack so that he sees a new one. And now he can gain one new spell. And the cost to gaining a spell is simple. This is the cost right up here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, three, four. And if you are Ragnar, red is free. If you are playing as Orsia, you get orange for free. And it has the cost associated. And you can also use health to buy the cards as well. So for instance, uh, let's say I didn't want the red and I wanted an orange card from Orsia. I could spend one. But I could use either health or I can use mana to do so. We'll go ahead and use mana though because we get it back. And then I can pick up this card and I put it into my hand. So now I have another card attached to uh, my hand. After which case I'll get to draw two cards from my deck. And then I can choose to discard any spells from my hand that I'd like to do. Now remember, you can only have three or less cards in your hand, otherwise you're going to suffer, suffer a penalty. So let's go ahead and say that I don't want the card that helps inspire people by giving them spells, and I'll discard that, putting it into my discard pile. Now remember, when your, dis your draw pile is empty and you need to draw a new card, you'll shuffle your deck and put it face down over here. And then after that, you are done with your turn, and the next player is going to get to go. And the same things will start triggering. You'll get to look at your hand of cards. You'll check to make sure you have five or less, because that is this specific character. Check to see your creatures in play. You'll get to gain your mana. You'll get to cast spells. Now, in this case, he's lost some health, so we can actually gain some mana, and he can gain three mana. That's pretty useful, though. Then he can cast his spells from 
his hand. He buries a spell from this pile, any of these piles over here. He gets to, to pay for a spell from either health or mana and put it into his hand. And then he draws two cards and discards cards that he wants. Now remember in this case, if he drew his two cards, he may want to actually keep all of those because he doesn't have to worry about the three up rule. It's a five up rule for him. So it helps him in some way. And it goes back and forth like that. Some cards will give corruption. And as you can see, corruption goes on the board and it kind of stays there until you purge it. And also let's say that you would put, would have put corruption on a player's mat. You actually would put it on and that player would have to lose a cube of, of, of mana or of health health, making it so that they basically the black bar starts running them out. And that is basically how you play the game. Now, of course, when you run out of all these tokens here, you're done for and you lose the game. But only the person, the only person who wins is the person who eliminates that player. So the players are going to go back and forth helping and hurting other players to basically become the winner of the game by nuking that last player at the very end. Uh, and it's a back and forth kind of style game. Also, don't forget that these white cards here, these ones are purchased for free as well. And you can go ahead and put them into your deck. Some of them are pets like this one. I can show you how they work so if he played this card he had it and he paid two two mana for it then he would uh, place health from this pile over here on this guy in which case he's now got his pet which means at the start of his turn he's purged uh, corruption equal to his power so every turn if he had let's say he had two corruption he would actually purge those two off of his board as long as the pet angel remained in play now these guys are removed whenever this guy would take damage and that damage would then be redirected to the angel they the player doing the damage can choose to do that so if i did two damage with magic missiles i could choose to do one damage to the angel thusly removing it and putting it in the discard pile and then i could do one damage to this guy if i wanted so that's how these guys get removed but otherwise that's pretty much the basic principles of how the game works so let's come up and i'll explain a couple more details and then i'll give you my review of the game wizards of roy g biv so, uh, a couple caveats. The first one was I made a small oopsie, and that is that I had the orange cards with the red player and the red player with the orange or and vice versa. Uh, just the lighting here, I guess it got mixed up, but nevertheless, it still played exactly as the game would play. I just happened to have different cards from the different players. Uh, nevertheless, I want to talk about a couple other little caveats. One is that if you don't like that single elimination aspect, which is more of a cutthroat caverns kind of a feel, you can play team-based, in which you can play two-on-two. Two. And it also works with three on two as well and the turns will kind of go back and forth so that everybody gets an equal number of turns and there's another king of the hill mode there's all kinds of different ways that you can play the game but it all plays basically the same way it's just whether or not you're working with another player or not when you're playing with the basic version of the game it feels a little bit like the not necessarily munchkin per se but you're trying to help a person up until the point where you're not because you want to destroy that player who is basically going to be losing so slowly people start losing health back and forth and uh, you're you're trying to manipulate your deck to make sure that you get exactly what you want and players are going to be shuffling cards or putting cards in the bottom of the deck to stop you from getting cards you want and then they're going to be trying to buy spells that they're going to be able to utilize in their deck. There are certain characters that will utilize certain things more than others like there's the corruption character who will simply try and place as much corruption on other players cards as he can as well as if he gains corruption himself he's going to gain health. The power character which is going to try and gather power cards because if he does that they're going to be more and more powerful throughout the game in which point it'll almost be unstable stoppable for him uh, and you won't be able to beat him and then there's characters that focus on pets so they give them more health or make them free to play all kinds of different things which will change the way you play the game with all the different seven wizards even though you can only play six players in a seven wizard game uh, you're basically going to be able to manipulate your deck to formulate the plan that best suits your mode of play and everybody's going to have their own mode of play trust me uh, and that's basically all I want to say about that kind of stuff, other than maybe the white cards. They're basically wild cards that will help you with counterspelling, which the only one I didn't really explain is uh, if somebody's playing a card on, on, some, on, on, on your turn, or uh, it's usually going to be a counterspell, in which case you would play a magic missile, they would play a counterspell, and a lot of cards have ways that can actually give you an option, like, oh, your card's going to be countered unless you pay four health and put two corruption on your board, which may or may not be worth it, because that might be enough for the killing blow, right? Uh, but otherwise, let's talk about the game now. So first of all, I like the artwork a lot. It's very, very vibrant, very colorful. Wizards of Roy G. Viv feels like a crazy rainbow wizard tavern ball, brawl type game. I've played a lot of brawling style games. This one's very unique because it has that bottom tracker which kind of associates your health, your mana, and the corruption, which moves along. It's like a really weird gauge in a fighting game as to how you're going to be taking damage and gaining certain things. You're also going to get shields, which can stop you from taking damage. You can choose to remove shields as opposed to removing health, but your shields won't help against pets. So if you get hit, instead of removing shields, they can choose to target that pet and remove it. And uh, that basically is going to 
not potentially help you necessarily, but the shields will definitely help you. And the pets are going to be active every turn. They're going to be doing something specifically, so players may choose to be going after those wizards, so that's how they win the game, but in essence, those pets need to be dealt with at a certain point. I like the combative nature of the game. Players who are going to like this game are going to be players who enjoy combative, aggressive style gameplay. Now, of course, you need to work with players at a certain point, because if I know, for instance, that Fred is my next player, and uh, I am going to die... I, uh, on, on not his turn, if he doesn't have enough to kill me, right? But the next player does, he might choose to not attack me and just gain, push his deck up. Maybe he was going to choose to help me, to keep me alive. And the team-based game, you're going to have the, your teammates working together with you, with you to make sure you stay alive because once a teammate is eliminated, that team is removed from the game. So a lot of backstabby social aspects in this game. Uh, of course, you're also going to have certain things like the magic missiles that feels like you're shooting players in different ways and trying to remove pets. That's what I would mainly use that for. And and then each of the decks for those wizards are going to be used based on how the wizards function. So maybe I'm a corruption guy, but I start, I'm starting to die. So maybe I need to start pulling cards from the blue deck because that's going to net me a lot of the shields. And I really, really need those at a certain point in the game. Really cool. I love that aspect of the game. I think the mechanics are really sound. If you like those, take, take that feeling deck builders. Because it has a little bit of a deck builder feel to it as well. Because you're slowly building your deck of spells. And manipulating it to be maybe only your color or the entire colors of the rainbow. It's kind of up to you how you want to formulate that and uh otherwise i just had a really good time like i said anybody who's going to like a big style party game it is actually a little longer of a game than i thought it would be but i think it's also going to depend on how players play if they want to play more defensive or more aggressive that will determine the length of the game so in general i think we played for like an hour and almost a half on our first game but i could see how you could end the game really quickly with a seven player game where you might not get more than three or four turns. It's kind of like how Cosmic Encounter works where you're going to have multiple players. Uh, more players is going to end in the fact that you're not going to have as many turns to act. And in fact, with Cosmic, you only maybe get one turn. This one's not going to be like that as much. And you also have cards you can play on other people's turns. So that, that's always a good thing. If you like combative, aggressive little games, you're going to dig this one. I had a lot of fun with it. Most players who played this as well had a good amount of fun with it as well. They, I think one player was a little more back and forth about how to learn the different augmentations and how power and spells and defense and all that worked but she's a very new gamer but once she got the ball rolling she started liking this game i had a lot of fun i think you guys will too if you're interested in taking a look at wizards of roy g biv you can go ahead and take a look down below in the description and determine for yourself if it's something you should pick up okay let's set up the wizard outro all right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help when we do greatly appreciate it, as well as taking a look at the game Wizards of Roy G. Biv. If you like a Take That Style deck builder, which is kind of interesting, then I think you're going to be interested in this game. It has some really unique mechanics I have not seen before, and of course, my favorite thing is that bar going up and down. It really feels like you're trying to gauge your power and manipulate that. And there's a lot more strategy and manipulation that you would think in a game like this because most take that's are easy easy to understand this one's got some more depth to it also go to our website unfiltergamer.com blog posts giveaways all that kind of stuff good stuff you should check it out we're giving away two games right now bloodborne is one of them and dogs is another one uh, bloodborne just came out recently so you have a chance to win with me ferdinand the cardboard stacker and everything boardgames.com our two friends and if you want to check out more of their content you can go ahead and do so as well thank you guys for watching and as always i look forward to one second i've got to get into wizard mode Ugh. Uh, uh, can I get into wizard mode? I don't know. This is this is pretty complex. <sighs> Beautiful. Seeing you guys next time on the wall.